back to Burning Gas on the YouTube. In today's video, I am back once again with my 2013 Chevrolet Silverado piece of junk pickup truck with 270,000 miles on it. Hopefully none of the rest of you have this problem, but something happened recently. Uh, this is what happens when your truck hits that 270,000 mile mark. It straight up is broken. So I ripped this open. There you can see she's loose there. So there's the all loose and all broken inside there. And so I ordered a new part. Hopefully it's the right part. Should be. So we're going to be doing some changing with that. So I picked this part up off of Amazon. It was $54, so it's not actually that bad. And I haven't actually watched any videos on it. I'm hoping it's an easy fix. But I'm gonna, I'll probably watch a video and then get into this. So, <laughs> a little concerned messing with all of this because I do have an airbag. I'm going to disconnect my battery. I don't think that does anything technically though. Like it should but I'm wondering if there isn't still some way for it to pop even with the battery disconnected. I don't trust it. It's not going to be fun for me, but I have to fix this because I drive this truck daily, so that needs to be fixed. Fortunately, it's Thanksgiving tomorrow, so I have the time because I'm actually I'm off of work for something else, but I do have the time to do it. So I'm going to go disconnect the battery real quick. I'll be right back. So, turns out this does have to come off, and <coughs> this is the gizmo I'm using. That's a socket on a screwdriver, T30 bit, and just a simple matter, going in here. This screw I can't access very easily. Okay, it's taking me a minute, but I've ended up ripping this off, ripped the whole gauge cluster piece out, finally got this whole thing loose. So, now that it's loose, you gotta reach down inside there. So, this is in like this. So I gotta reach down in here and access this piece and adjust it. This is for the linkage. Down there.
so if you order the Dorman model of this latch here, then watch out because they just have a stupid Phillips screw and I stripped out two of them as you can see had to notch it, turn it into a flat head rather than a Phillips head so you're going to want to remove this boom, that pops out and then this comes out so We'll just plop it there. So that's the same thing that's going to happen here. I'm going to take this off and pop that thing again. So this, can't really see it I guess in the camera. There's a deal back here you're going to want to pull loose. So now Carefully remove this. Remove that. There it comes. All right. Now I'll drop down underneath and hook everything back up again. Hook all of my connections up. So the best way to do that is with a vice grip. You just, I don't think I can show it, but maybe. So basically, You can kind of see right here this. So basically, I just slide my vice grip in here and 
both sides of the deal. Ooh. I'm gonna need two hands. Boom, it's on. That's one side. And then, where's my other? Okay, right here. So this drops in as well. Yeah, that one just popped on. All right, now let's see if we can shift through gears. Should be able to. Wow, it goes way down now. Actually, that feels about right. All right, there you have it. Okay. That's that. So, now I guess I can put everything back together again. I'll just slide this back in. And so there you have it. That's how it's done. It's all popped back together there now. I've got it all hooked up. And I can continue to drive this truck for another 300,000 miles. But yeah, if you uh, break your column shift like that at 270,000 that is oh, well, it's popped apart again okay that's how you do it uh, you can use this method to change uh, if you look it up on YouTube there's multiple videos of people putting a newer shifter on their their older truck. This is the same. This is the same system that's been used since '99. So that's probably still being used now. In well, maybe not because now we have the the turn dial uh, gear selector. But this is the same system from the '99 to '07 body style, the Cat Eye Chevy, and the '90 and the '07 to '14. Um, well, '07 to '13 1500s and '07 to '14 2500s. Uh, if you want to switch to this with the gear selector or the, <laughs> the yeah the the manual shift you can purchase that and you may or may not have the harness in there you might want to rip it open and check that first it's just a little white harness down there you can yeah you can figure all that out yourself I'm not figuring it out for you I will say do not purchase the doorman because of that one tiny issue I had, I hate them. Um, spend the seventy-four dollars instead of fifty, instead of forty-nine dollars. Spend the seventy-four dollars to get an a Chevy OEM with the Torx bit, Torx screws on it. It would be just that much easier, I think. This has a couple of teensy tiny fitment issues, but I got it all in there. It's all hooked up. It's good. We're fine. But uh, yeah, that's it for me, everyone. Uh, please like and subscribe. More. Uh, don't forget that uh, at some point I'm going to do a road trip in my Datsun, and it's going to depend on how many subscribers I have. The more subscribers, the more miles. So yeah, for ev for every subscriber, I'm going one mile in my 1979 Datsun 620. So subscribe, uh, like the video or dislike it. I don't care either way either one of them add comment on it tell me what I should do next I need some ideas for more modifications cheap modifications to my truck I do want to send it into the dealership or not the dealership into a, a shop and I get the engine tuned transmission needs work you can't rebuild these transmissions apparently but you or you shouldn't because you'll just have more and more issues it's better to just replace an OE so that's gonna be five grand but 
But yeah, uh, let me know what you think I should do next. Any modifications I can make to my interior here or the exterior. Anything. Anything I down to listen. So, see you next time.